sit back and relax by listening to Train Kickers podcast. I'm Dave, and along with my co-hosts Dan and Steve, we're going to take you all on the world of miniature wargaming. On tonight's episode, our hopeful goal is to get through the rest of the militia for Horse Heresy. That includes the fast attack, the heavy support, as well as the single Lord of War choice that they have. Um, at this point, we went through all the other options. This isn't that many overall, so shouldn't have a problem getting through that. And we'll do our normal sort of deep dive through this. Um, for any other announcements and all, that'll be here at the end, so I can talk to these guys and see what sort of announcements we have. So otherwise, on to the show. All right, gentlemen, it is 8.52 on a Monday evening. I don't know where the day went because I didn't work. Oh, you fuck. <laughs> I, I go well we have graduation when, sorry thursday night but otherwise i don't really have to go back until like july 10th we're doing state testing still starting tomorrow through thursday i thought i, I thought you said you're doing it last week no 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 so what they normally what they do is they do lal one week math another week science another week right mm-hmm. because what happens is L, both sixth seventh and eighth take lal both sixth seventh and eighth take math and then only eighth and fifth take science right so they that way you take it you know it's all four take one all week what all four take one other week and then the third week it's only two makes it easy okay yeah <sighs> fucking uh this year the district decided to do lal then science then math. So this week is math. So sixth, seventh, and eighth is Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and eight or sorry, sixth and seventh is Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and eighth is only Wednesday, Thursday. And then next week it's more testing, but it's not my grade level, so I don't care. <laughs> I don't know. should all be always be tested in science. Science is important. It's not the testing in science that's the problem. It's the they should have waited for this science for the third week, right? Because well, no, that's that's fine. Yeah. I'm just saying all the students should always be tested in science because science is oh, important. Yeah. No, I agree. Which is like, oh, you skip out for a few years. Let's hope you picked up uh, any bit of knowledge. Uh, Maybe you figured uh, out what gravity was. Uh, yeah, right. that's, uh, are you, that's are you why done I sound your, so tired. Uh, that's fine. <laughs> Are you done with your? You, I forget what you said it was. Um, pretzel. It's snack factory pretzel crisps, thin that crunchy just, pretzel crackers, garden vegetable deli delicious. style. Delicious. It is yeah. delicious. It's leftovers from pretzel my hummus factory. that I was having yesterday. Is so pretzel good. factory the one with like the green emblem? Is that? I think we uh, order those all the time. It is oh, green. So well, this one's green. I think it changes. I don't got a yeah. stop and shop. No, but, Dan's um, thinking of a place that what they do is pretzels. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're a little bit different, but all right. Um, all right, so we'll go ahead and get started after after that. So, like I said, our goal is to get through the fast attack, the heavy support, and the single Lord of War. Some of these, much like the last time, will be very very fast. Some will take a little bit longer. Um, and for this, we. Oh, let me readjust a window here so I can see my time stamping. There we go. All right, and we will start with Dan talking about the Arvis because that will put him in position. No, wait. No. Yeah, you're right. Yep. You're right. No, no. You're right. Yes. Yes. There we go. You are correct. Counting is you fundamental. Yes. So you're starting with that so that we can get to Beastmasters <laughs> yeah. later. Uh, and what we're going to, um, well, at least what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare it to like the Solar Ox one because I like to see how many discounted points it is. Because I was actually, me and Dave were talking before the podcast even started. And mm. we were kind of comparing, like, some are like almost 50% off and some are only 30 points off. So it's actually kind of cool. Uh, all right. So the Arvis. Um, Arvis is going to be 40 points for Militia. It's exactly the same as Solar Ox. So remove 20, BS3, front and side 11, rear 10. I think, yeah, two hull points, 12 capacity. It has smoke launchers, it has deep strike, it's infantry transport. You have a rear axis point. And with every vehicle here, it's going to be completely the same. It's going to be third line. Um, and then, of course, it's hover, transport, and flyer. So it's pretty much ig- – oh, it doesn't have searchlights. Huh. I just realized I'm looking back and forth. It does not have the searchlights of the solar rocks. They can't afford them. <laughs> ah, <laughs> that's why it's 35 yeah. points off. Does, almost no. half price. Does the solar rocks one have a weapon? No, no, it does not. Okay, no. so it just spots someone for for you. Yeah, it spots okay. someone. Uh, but yeah, no, they're forty points. And to give you, and again for comparison, the solar rocks is seventy five. So essentially, you're paying damn near fifty percent off on this one. 
Yeah. Honestly, if no one has anti, if no one has anti aircraft, take them. See, okay, so, so you like, say the that units that go inside is much more limited here. Yeah. Because your standard troops unit starts at twenty bodies. Oh, that's true. Right. So yeah. your grenadier squads and your command cadres can go in, and that's the, about it. The, the other big thing to keep in mind here is that okay, if they don't, if they don't have sky fire flyers are safer in general, but if my glances are pens on this sort of thing, and it's only an eleven. You don't need many sixes on the to hit to be able to get to an 11 if it's a decent gun. So at, at, at two hull points, if I get any results on you, I'm doing something bad. Because flyer, flyers take some pretty bad results. If flyers get immobilized, can they hover? Crash. Or... They crash and burn. Yeah, and, and pretty much everyone inside. Table. Yes, and whatever's inside won't survive it. Yeah, Because it's they're, they're like AP2 hits. Yeah, but it's forty points. Swarm them. It, play, uh, play, uh, <laughs> play, play, play. Um, oh, I forgot the, thing, the damn though. name of the song. One person. Yeah, you only get one. Oh is yeah, that's right. This for is anyone? A, it's is it dedicated? No, I don't nope. think they got no dedicated. No way options. to make it. Oh, yeah, there man. is no dedicated in this army list unless you use the survivors of the dark age. Yeah. My hopes and dreams are dashed. Survivors of the Dark Age, what do they get dedicated? Do you have in front of you? I'm Rhinos, to to Land Raider, Proteus. Oh, this is the Space Marine the stuff. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So, but they don't get this. Someone, yeah. someone should have had this as a dedicated. Because if you could yeah. take it as dedicated. Yeah. Solar pattern cohorts for the Solar Ox do. And that's it. And that's yes. not even this army. That's kind of, that is kind of depressing. Because I would love for someone, I don't know how many points. Space many, Pirates. How, yeah, like all of a sudden you're like you have these tanks rumbling on the ground and you roll the deep strike and it's like 20 of these assholes <laughs> dropping from orbit. <laughs> I think the problem is the transfer capacity just limits that so much in this particular army that it's difficult. I mean, I guess they could lump it in with the grenadier as an option, but it's it's rough. It is. But it's it would wrong. be really, really cool to see like a mass swarm of these. Maybe not twenty; that's too much. But could you imagine like ten of these just dropping down from the sky and see, pooping out? What is that? One hundred and twenty people on twelve yeah. times ten? Yeah, yeah. one hundred and twenty people. See, and that's where it would start to get both good and interesting because you'd have enough if you have one flying thing. And let, let's say I don't have any flyer support. If you have one, I can take out one. On two hull points, armor 11, I can take out one. If you have multiple without Skyfire, I'm not taking those down. Yeah. Or even like I said, it has deep strike. When you deep strike in, if that's the only thing that's deep striking, which, you know, there's not a lot of ways to deep strike here. What else deep strikes? Actually thinking about it. The void jumpers in void Survivor's jumpers. Yes. Dark Age. Yeah. So, so, so if you happen to take that, if not, if you deep strike this thing in, Augury scanners. I'll shoot it. Yeah. You know, it's even just, on sixes, I, I wish, if I get I two, I'll have it. It needs to be dedicated. Yeah. Yeah. That would be so freaking cool. Still like how it looks like the Eagle Five, like a fancier version. But it, it is. It, it is a neat. It's actually, and like I said, I know we said this about the Thunderbolt, but and I, I know you saw the Thunderbolt for like what the first time ever at the Harris event on Sunday or Saturday. Uh, in 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 real life, yes. Yeah, it, the Arvis is actually bigger than what it looks like in the picture. It's actually yeah. kind of chunky, which is interesting. But anyway, that's the Arvis. Quick, yeah. easy, simple. Yeah. Not not too not too much to say about it, unfortunately. Um Steve was taking the Cargo 8 hauler, which is a newish model. Yep. Cuz it was in Necromunda. Is that yes, it was one of the first things they dropped the Necromunda Ash Wastes. Um mm -hmm system campaign whatever you want to call it um however like most things in the militia army list it's a bit of a generic profile that just leans towards the cargo weight hauler so for 50 points you're going to get a movement 10 ballistic skill 3 armor 12 11 10 vehicle with three hull points and a 22 transport capacity which ain't shabby honestly that's a lot of models um let's see you get one cargo hauler with the searchlight one access point at the rear. It's a vehicle with third line of transport and no special rules. Now you do you you do get the squadron them for forty points per additional model up to three total. So you bring three of these guys as a squadron. They do stay together, 
um, that would be uh, math 130 points, which isn't that much unless you get 66 miles up the board. Mm -hmm. um, they do clarify that um, if you embark on miles part of a squadron, all the miles in the units still have to fit inside one cargo hauler. You can't split them between multiple transports. Because we do have 50 model squads in this army. It's yeah. it's a relevant clarification. Um, then for options, we actually do get to put guns on this thing. So um, any model in the squadron may take any of the following. So you could take both. You could take a pintle-mounted heavy stubber and a pintle-mounted grenade launcher. Each of those are five points. And any of them may take any of these. I don't know why it's um, listed separately because all these just things get to take. I guess it's a thematic clustering. Yeah, um, weapons and non weapons. Yeah. Well, so, other yeah, than so, the killer. Yeah. 100 kill missiles are always different because that really yes. weapon is more of an accessory. Um, yeah, we get to take uh, smoke launchers, hunter killer missiles, dozer blades, and the armory container upgrade, which is a new thing for 10 points. You reduce transport capacity to 12. You gain the infantry transport rule, so you're not carrying bulky models. But you're increasing your side and rear armor by one, up to max of 12. So you end up being 12, 12, 11 for the armor facings. Um, additionally, a uh, model of this upgrade may take up to two additional pintle mounted heavy stuffers, which is almost a chimera. Almost. It's weird. It's like an Orox transport, but be fear yeah it's just, it's, it's a double-sized orox transport kind of basically yeah. what it is i mean the actual model is what like a semi truck that they yes, stick a armor yeah. container on the back of so good it's <laughs> so damn good <laughs> I'm living really out like all the, your uh, fantasies of playing the zombie apocalypse oh man forge Roll makes this gorgeous model not at all worth the money in my opinion wait uh, but it's a gorgeous Forge World makes model. the no, Wait, they, make an up, they make an upgrade for it. Wait, that gives really? it tracks and it, like armor. Oh, it's oh, it's so cool. Yeah. So uh, GMA is the basic classic one. That. It's about a hundred bucks for that. But let me see if I can find this. Uh, where would it? Where is it under Necromunda? No, yeah, right. it's under Necro. It's under Necromunda. Uh, and it's a vehicle, so I'm not sure what category it would be under. Oh, here we Ash go. No, it's no. Chronos Pattern Iron Crawler. What the fuck? I want to. I'm just gonna put all. I'm just gonna put all because it doesn't have a vehicle. It's on the oh, the Chronos table. pattern. Oh, look at I that! Love oh, 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 I didn't even know this existed. I've never seen this model. When did they release this? Like six months, almost a year ago, something around there. Wow, I must have not been paying. No. Oh, we look at the. We don't follow Necromunda stuff much, so look at the butt of. Oh my god, I love it. Oh my god! I want it for my mechanic. I'm so badly. <laughs> I, I don't know what I'm use it for, but I want it. Same. It's unfortunate. Oh, yeah, it's no, uh, so cool. It is a really cool model. So if you want to get god. into the 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 three dollars per point range, um, you could use these things, or could you know <laughs> use chimeras from your old guard collection and just downgrade. Yeah, them. it's just it's basically chimeras. But but still, this is that is neat. I I will say. Have not actually seen that ever, but um, although I will say the cargo eight isn't actually that bad either. The oh, no, 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 I like in general, I do like it. I mean, yeah, if you really like it, I know a shop that has one on the shelf. Yeah, I don't like it that much. You could also use the Goliath truck as well if you want to even cut down costs. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, even the Goliath is kind of expensive. Isn't the Goliath truck a gene stealer thing? Why is it an under yes. Necromunda? Anyway, yeah, okay, it's I didn't under reason. And I'm like. Is because Jesus are cults, and when they wrote the rules for Ash Wastes, like, and they expanded the list, oh, okay. they explicitly called out that stuff because it's not really a Gene Stealer cult vehicle; it's a mining vehicle that's very often co-opted by Gene Stealer cults. God, it makes sense. Okay, if that that's why I know. Sense. All right, no, these are these are yeah. I mean, honestly, you could take the orc route and just go nuts and um, <laughs> start kit bashing shit. You can literally just take an orca truck. Use your old Gorka Morka collection. <laughs> so so making it armored, now you're at the same problem of, of what it can take is like two units. You're tougher. I'm not sure if it's so much worth it. 
I don't know if I'd put, I wouldn't bother with a heavy stubber on this thing because I'm not hitting well. The grenade launcher, maybe. But this, I think, yeah, you're just trying to keep it as cheap as possible and you can transport a nice 20 man block. Um, just I don't be inside has, if it explodes. It Well, it speeds up deployment quite a bit. I guess that's a major uh, yeah. bonus for it because it's instead of deploying 20 models, you're deploying one model and then later deploying 20 models. Yes. Move 10, um, you are getting better movement. Mm -hmm. If you do Warrior Elite, I think the Arbor Container is not a bad call. Because you get three of these per slot as a squadron, so just load three up with Grenadiers if you're doing Warrior Elite. Run up the board, disembark. You also hit the Recon squads in there, but they don't really, they don't really do much in it. The Opens no. could go inside if it's not armored. And you could fit Math says seven of them in there. Whether well, they bulky two or three, bulky three. Yeah. All right. Yeah, you can fit seven then. Um, oh no! Sorry, they're bulky four. Oh yeah. Never mind. You're fitting five. I lied. Which... They went up in bulk. Yeah, they did. That's just enough though to put a ogre and boss. So you could take f a five with one being an ogre and boss. This is sure. a uh, not necessarily moving you moving you a little faster by about an inch, but not running. Or the, the vehicle can go actually, if you're having the vehicle essentially flat itself out, then it could get a bit further along as well. At least reasonably survivable getting there. The biggest problem with this is you're not space marine saves. So if someone actually blows up your vehicle, you're actually losing potentially a lot of models. Well, wounds, you got three wounds a pop. Well, yeah, not well, for, for Ogrens, yes, but even just, I'm thinking oh, even just a normal 20-man oh, squad, like, you're going to lose a lot of guys. Oh, yeah, the base guy's getting wrecked. That's why yeah. it's a third line and not a front line unit. Yeah, I mean, that. I mean, so at, at 12, you know, yes, your your glances are going to automatically go to pens, which is, is problematic. Most of the weapons that are probably glancing it are not the weapons that are going to blow it up. But if anything does, it's going to hurt even more. But it is cheap. It's going to suck. If it's a squadron, uh, yeah. getting immobilized is going to be annoying. Because then, well, it's not the worst. No, because remember, you uh, leave them behind. Yeah, yeah it's not the yeah, worst yeah. thing, but it is still annoying. It used to be a bad thing. Quaff, cough, squads of behind bloodthirsters or demon princes. Um, I just told you before, vehicles never had that problem. Yeah, I know. I just keep thinking yeah. of that, and I was like, oh, I remember that stupid rule interaction. Well, the, the biggest thing is there's not a lot of squadron of transports currently. Hmm. So normally, when, when you, if you have to leave it behind, you're leaving behind essentially a gun tank. Yeah. Here, you're leaving behind something that actually wanted to get somewhere because it has guys inside to do a job. Yeah. So it, it is yeah. rough getting left behind. Honestly, and <laughs> the only other say, one I could think of is yeah. Land Raider Squadrons. Yeah. Uh, listen, and you know I never say this because I'm all about maximum size squads, but this is the weird part. I'm going to like, keep it just cheap. Don't give it the armored container. No dozer blade. Hunter killer, no. Smoke launcher. Eh, smoke launchers, maybe. No grenade launcher, no heavy stopper. Just keep that fucker at 50 to 55 points with smoke launchers. Carry 22 times 3. Uh, six, ooh, sorry, 66 uh, mm -hmm. dudes up the battlefield. This, the theme of this army is not, you know, taking 12 people in the battlefield and protecting yourself. It's I'm 50 points of I'm carrying my peasants. You know, that's just my. And again, this is coming from the dude who loves his elite armies. This is not that as much as I want to reduce it to 12 capacity in my head. I'm looking at the rest of the army and I'm like, why the hell would I do that? It doesn't do that much for you because you figure early on people are going to be seeing your front anyway. I'm not so worried about my side armor turn one. And th th this to me feels like you want to be going first with something like this because then at least you get up the field before it potentially starts exploding all over the place or immobilize. If getting to the 12 where normally you need to get above to actually worry about the mobilization, just getting to the 12. It's not too tough to get the 12. And mobilize is six or five? No, uh, it's uh, it's a number on the chart. I don't remember which one. I think it's. I'm six. assuming you don't have like an AP two or better weapon. Would be my yeah. assumption. No, no, I'm just saying it's, yeah, it's result more, six. Yeah, all right. So you need it's a one. Okay, got it. It's just, just a six. Yeah, it was going. Yeah, it's going to be a one in six anyway for one of those weapons. But if you can get it on a glance, 
it's more likely that you get that because this is a vehicle unlike when we get to the lord of war this is a vehicle that cares about the glancing being penetrating hits yeah for what it does you know it'd be petrifying um imperial fists yeah. or blood angels with assault cannons yep that Honestly, would be petrifying even if not immobilized what also would be rough is um it's what crew stunned that doesn't let you move as well um i always forget which yes, one's it's, it's a four stunned. four you know so four is crew it's one of the shaken or stunned but it it's a result four is you can't move or shoot yeah so five is so that destroyed. is rough yeah. um remind me because i don't have it in front of me apparently for weapon destroyed what happens if you don't have a weapon I think it's just you an extra hull point. upgrade to immobilized. Yes, there it is. Really? Yep. Yeah. That's what I figured. That's what it always was in the past, back in older editions. Is where search this was light, is searchlight a weapon? No. <laughs> no, searchlight is not a weapon. You can't hurt God, people yeah. with flashlights so of this bad caliber. You kind of need to give it a weapon as a just in case. That might be the only reason why you give it one of the pinnel mounted weapons yep. is Pretty because much. otherwise, if you are penned, which your glance is a penned, 50-50 chance you're not moving. You yep. may never move again, but 50 50 chance you're not going anywhere. The you irony, need to go places. My the suggestion irony of taking a weapon to avoid immobilized is not lost on me. So, my suggestion is go for the grade launcher because then you could yes. maybe pin something if you happen to shoot that grade yes, launcher. Yes, agree. No, yeah, pick, pick the grenade launcher. It's the better option of the two. All right. Um, why don't we talk about things that can't go in it because it doesn't have horse stables? So this is the Imperial, Imperialis Militia Cavalry Squad. It's 50 points for five guy, five outriders, including one of them being a sergeant, all these guys on horses. Um, they're move 14. Otherwise, their stat is the stats that we've been seeing. There are threes across the board, except they got one wound. They get one attack, and the leadership is either six or seven for the sergeant with five up saves. Um, they are all light. They have the militia, so they can get... Um, all the different things that we talked about for um, the provinces. Some wouldn't necessarily apply, but they do get them. Um, for war gear, they got last pistol, auto pistols. So they get a basic close combat weapon. So essentially in close combat, they're two attacks. They get flak armor and their cavalry mount. All the cavalry mount means is that one, your cavalry. And two, if you run, you get a five up shrouded until the start of your next turn. They're relentless. They have scout and they have hammer of wrath one because you're going to hit a guy with a horse. You can take 10 more, so you can get up to 15 for 8 points a guy. Um, the sergeant can take bolt pistol, blast pistol, plasma or plasma pistol, chainsaw, power weapon for various points. Um, all models can take either shotguns for a point, stub carbines for 2, last carbines for 2, or the militia lance for 5. We did mention the lance before. I'll mention it again because a lot of the other weapons we talked about quite a bit. Maybe we'll get into it, but for the uh, Militia Lance, it's Strength 7, AP 3. The big thing is that it's ungainly, which means you get one attack. Um, Yeah. And you don't get your bonuses, anything like that, so you are swinging once. Um, brutal 2, though. Sudden Strike 2, so you got a better initiative, and it's two-handed. So other option-wise, you can give them Carapace Armor for two points each, so you can get up to a four-up save. These guys are really, really cheap and really fast. I do think that's a good idea. A little bit more spending for quite a bit of increase because now you actually get saves versus bolters. Four to, four to five is big. Um, and one guy could take either a grenade launcher, flame, or a melt gun, plasma gun, or the melt lance The melt lance is sexy. I would, yeah. I would nah. No. Nah. It, it's like only it. AP three. It it's strength lance? eight. Oh, I thought yeah. it was AP two. Nope. Strength eight, AP oh, three. Okay. Never mind. It's, it's ungainly one use. lance, but and it's one use, right? Yeah, that one is one use as well. Yeah, I'm not yeah. a fan of the melt lance at all. And unfortunately, it doesn't say that it turns into like the normal because militia lances can keep being used. If it was, you get one use of that, but then it's militia lance afterwards. Maybe I could see some reasons because it has the lance ability. You can get through vehicles better, but no, and you only get one swing because it's ungainly. And don't forget the militia lance is brutal too. The yes. melt lance. This one is not. not. Yeah, it is. It should be. I don't know why it should be AP two. If you make it AP two, I can make an argument for it. 
or AP one, because that's what a melta gun is. Or melt a bomb, or melt a anything. Yeah, any melta. Yeah. Now you're now you're talking sense, Dan. We can't do that. Actually, no. What I didn't even think about that. Yeah, being melta. If you make it AP one, now I could see it because Lance at AP one or against someone else. Yeah. Okay, I'll take the shot, but. Is there any also? Does it not have the melter rule? Am I crazy? No. Correct. It no, does, it does not. not have the melter rule. Huh? It is. It, it, it is. does not have armor bane. Basically, it, it's glance on a four, penning on a five. Yeah, it feels like a misprint. I just don't know what they intended, but something there seems wrong. Because it's also ten more points. Mm-hmm. It's that. That's quite a bit for one, one attack shot. at blitz skill, at weapon skill three. I agree. Now, having said it's, that, I have, oh, go ahead. It's a more complicated hunter killer missile. Yeah, that's all it is. Um, having said all that, I do really like the cavalry as an option. Um, this gives you some speed that the army in general does not have. It gives you, if you want to take those the militia lances, it gives you an AP three weapon, which the we're going to see some vehicles obviously that have have good AP weapons and all. But this is your first normal squad that is beating out general um, space marine armor. You might not got a lot of swings, but you can take quite a few of these guys. They will get the swing first against you know against standard marines. You shouldn't be throwing this at anything that's going to fight great in combat because you'll you have the sudden strike too. Um, fourteen with light uh, and scout to start so you can get yourselves into a very good position to be able to rush in and get these off very quickly. Um, in general, honestly, I really like them. And like I said, they're also really cheap, which is nice. So being as cheap as they are, if they end up being a throwaway piece, that's okay. If they end up, I don't know, hurting one unit, but then not getting too much further, I'm probably cheaper than the unit I went against. I targeted, because of my speed, a unit that I can hurt and that will cause me a problem. Yeah. Uh, honestly, I really like these guys a lot. And plus, we haven't liked the other fast attacks too, too much. And some of the other ones, they're n- nothing bad, but I think I think you can easily fit a squad of these guys in. I would probably go for a big squad. I wouldn't take five men because five men, you're gonna, just going to get crushed to Overwatch. Oddly enough, they don't. I oh, they didn't do this anywhere though with anything on a bike or on a cav or anything like that. The extra toughness. I think everything that's on a platform should have had plus one toughness. Yes, uh, I. Okay, and this is me coming from a custodian's player. There's no goddamn reason why the stupid bike is three times the size of the custodian, and 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 doesn't grant a toughness bonus. Not even an armor bonus. They're three up. And I'm just like, why? It's because mm, mm, I'm shooting the guy on the mm, bike, not the bike, Dan. Then why is he not tough? But this, I, you, mm, mm. <laughs> I'm not going to go down this road because that's not, a big salt moment for me. Yeah, I, I mean, to me, I can understand why they might not want to do it across the board because they might want not want it to do that to custodes because then that puts them at maybe a toughness that they're uncomfortable with. Fine. You could say, okay, the, the guy's so big or something like that. He's an easy target without hitting the bike. But for some of these other ones, I mean, this is a guy on a horse. If you're shooting it, you are more likely to hit the horse. Yep. And the horse should be, you know, tougher. I don't, you just do it because it makes sense. At least with these guys, you're not spending really more points. And a lot of other spots, when you go to cavalry, you're faster and you spend a lot more. At least these guys are pretty in line with the other points costs. They're more expensive, yeah. but they're not so far outside the realm of uh, of, of cost. But I, I do like them. I would probably take them with they're the cool. Marshall Lances. I think they're pretty cheap to 225 make. 225 points for 15 with Lances? Something like that? 200, you said 15? 1, 2, yeah. 3, 4, 5. Actually, yeah, they're 60 bucks for 5. So... Not as expensive. No, price wise, price wise, that's actually. I'm looking at the Rough Riders, doing. by the way. The new Attila. Oh yes, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, I, I think you can do well with a, a a squad of those, and it leaves you the spots for some of these other ones. Because I know we've talked about Beastman related stuff in the past. Can you get all these models, all the animals? Uh, for are you saying like Beastman on top of horses? No, centaurs. No. 
Oh, oh, no, no, sorry. no, no. I'm just thinking literally for what you're about to talk about because we're, you know, part oh, of the choice. Can you get I thought you, you said B. I thought we were talking about cavalry, and I'm like, yeah, no, no, no. Centigars. Oh, no, no you okay, could sorry. Use yeah, I was going to say that's a, yeah. Sorry, my mind was still on horses. Um, oh, okay, so we're on Beastmasters. Okay, sorry. Yeah. I, I, no, 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 just I'm, weird. No, I'm just thinking because, like, like, when we look at some of this stuff, it's like, oh, the price can you get? I remember I when we think talked we about did these in the past. Had, but it's like tough. You got to get them from a variety of places. And, and, well, these are more third party. I, I think the Mastiff, if we wanted to go like full GW, the Mastiff and the, uh, I think the Crocodile were both. Yes. Um, the Crocodile, the Cayman was, yes. I remember that. Yeah. And they're then, all Forge um, World Necromunda. Are they um, all are? Okay. Stuff. Yeah. All of them. All right, uh, so why don't you tell so, us about these? All right, so let's Beast talk Masters. about the Beastmasters. Um, let's see here. We got 50 points. I, I opened up the Pursuer Cadre, so for those who don't know, their Sisters of Silence have their own um, have their own little, uh, whatchamacallit, their own little... Uh, Beast Pack. Beast Pack, yeah. So we're going to see basically what happens. So they're 50 points. Um the sisters are 65 points, by the way, so actually not that much cheaper. Uh, six movement, three, 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 three. One wound, <laughs> three initiative, one attack. Leadership, seven, five up save. Um, you got closer to your microphone. I did? Oh. Yeah, you did. I was probably speaking louder. We have three. There are three militia handlers in the squad. There are militia and skirmish. Um, skirmish is really nice. Um they are beast masters, which means they can take some animals. Um, they have frag grenades, flak armor, base close combat weapon, last pistol. But um, they pretty much have the same options. We're talking seven additional militia handers at eight points a pop. You can get shotguns, stub carbines, las carbines. And then, of course, you get your animals. Um, you can get a, a dog, a cat, or they. Uh, a crocodile and a raptor. And I'm kind of glancing right now, and I do not see a difference between the Sisters of Silence. I'm just checking real quick. Stats-wise, yeah. Yeah, initiative 4534, 4534, 22223, Oh! Sisters are a little bit better in the in leadership. <laughs> that makes um, sense. And nope, that's basically the same rules too. So check it's the exactly subtypes. the same. Nope, check the subtypes. Sub subtypes of whom? Of the oh, handlers. they're not light. Oh yeah, they're not yeah. light. They're militia and skirmish. No, no, no. But they, yeah, that makes a big difference though. Um, based for like the speed of the unit, because the light yeah. units get an extra um inch on their runs, for example. And they got something else. I'm blanking on it. Uh, let me check my rule book while you talk more about stuff. Because I know light is relevant. Alright. Keep going though, Dan. Alright. Yeah, they're pretty much the yeah. Mm. <laughs> really you to to you want to talk about these guys. That's all I have to say about No, them. but I I just realized like they're exactly the same. I'm gonna say exactly the same that I did about the sisters. They're they're good. The raptors are awesome. That's about it. I mean it, it, I'm not trying it just they seem cool. But they, they, it's the same thing as the sisters. Take say, take some crocodiles. <laughs> feel five will feel no pain. <laughs> Toughness five. But yeah. They do have a rule for what happens, though, if all the militia beast masters are removed. So any of the war beasts that are left, um, they, but when selected during the movement phase, must move along the path of the controlling player's choice towards the enemy that's closest. Um. You have to be able to see it. So essentially, they are mindless now. They're just going to rush at the enemy. Um, if they can't see anything, they're just pinned. Um, and if if they're... But, uh, yeah, and then they must charge if they're by themselves. So essentially, they get uh, the same sort of uh, protocols that uh, the robots do. Makes sense. You know, they kind of revert to their baser instincts without a person being like, hey, go bite that person. Yeah, just a bunch of wild animals. Makes sense. Are they the same cost? Oh, per... it's, the, it's the fleet. That's what's different. Oh, okay. Um, the Sister Science have fleet, I think, right? And these guys don't? I don't have the book with me right now because... Dan would have to tell I'm... us he has it open. Yeah. So we don't have a Dan. Oh. Nope. Yep. I just saw that we don't have a Dan for a moment. Okay. So, um, he, we can check about that in a second. Um, 
I th- I think that's what it was because I remember in the sisters one we were not like we liked the Cayman but it wasn't the best thing because it didn't have the fleet. Yeah, and I think that's because the sisters have the fleet. So we're like, yeah. eh, it slows you down too much. But here, where you don't have fleet on the basic unit, it's a pretty appealing option because it's beefy. <laughs> Toughness five, two wounds, um, feel no pain five up. It's reasonably it's durable. It- my my biggest problem with it, and for the Cayman, yeah, the feel no pain. It's that it's fifteen. So the Mastiff and the Philidae are ten points each. The Cayman is fifteen. The Raptors ten as well. I think it's just the cost. You're spending fifty points before you get any animals, and then you can take an animal per militia handler that you have. So this squad is a minimum 80 points for three guys with three of these animals. If you're not counting the Cayman, if you are putting the Cayman in, then you're going up by more. It just, it, it feels, it feels somewhat expensive for what they're going to do because these are guys in five up saves. Sisters were at least in three up saves. You know, the other stats might be, I mean, I know sisters have some better stats otherwise, but the big thing is like the save was better. So they're going to live longer. Well, that's why you kill off the um, all but one handler to start, and then you just have a bunch of beasts running around after that. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, they all have interesting benefits, right? Like, the shrouded on the raptors is kind of interesting because that's probably your best way to get in to reach the enemy. Yeah. Um, I, don't know, I, I like the idea of just having a squad of crocodiles running around. I mean... The others are okay. Honestly, but for me, it's it's the Cayman and the Raptors that are the most appealing. Um, they just kind of lack that defining factor to me. Yeah, I, five. Ooh. Yeah, no, I I I agree. Um, when you take a look at them, okay, I mean the Mastiff has a uh, Furious Charge one. He's Strength four, but he's two attacks. I don't. You're not going to get quite enough out of it. It's not like the other guys. Um, they're going to be two attacks as well with nothing special for the Beastmasters. You're not, you don't feel like you're getting much in terms of that. I don't think he necessarily gives you that that much. He's not giving you any extra toughness, at least for the Cayman. If you get enough of them, now at least you're a toughness five squad. Um, has the same number of attacks, but has strength five. So you're already kind of hitting the similar levels that the other one was. I just. I'm not as thrilled with them here because it feels like I might spend a lot of points for a unit that's not going to do much. Um, not to mention the beasts do not get modified by your uh, provenance. That's, the handlers do, but the beasts don't because they're not militia type. Yes, that's one of the things I was looking at. And then the other thing, so did they make, did they write this well enough for it not to be an issue? Where am I? Where do I want to be? For the militia rule. How exactly is it worded? So any, a unit that includes any models with a militia unit subtype may only attempt to regroup if that unit is at least half of the models. So the the animals... So let, let's say you... you I have you three handlers, out, three caiman. Say you, you max kill out, my you handlers. have 20 bodies, yeah. The caiman can't regroup because... Well, huh. But then they have their own special rule of what they do. And the unit does not contain any militias at that point. At that moment. So it's actually better for you to kill off the Beastmasters. Because if you leave one and say you went low enough, then you're not going to regroup. You're just going to keep running away. The oh, militia so are a liability. As long as you get in there, yeah. And that's actually the same problem. If you get in and charged... And then um, if you're falling back, boom, you get wiped. Because it's a- anyone uh, bu- bu- yeah, that has any of them. Up till now, okay, we know that the militia unit subtype is rough. But everything so far has been militia. So like it never made much of a difference. But in this one, if, uh, if you're locked in combat and someone else, yeah, not monstrous or mechanized unit subtype, yeah, and then someone else charges in, you're just you're probably going to leave you're probably out of there so the fact that they're mixed kind of feels like you just want to get rid of the militia because then you're actually better i'm not saying i love it then but it's better 
which is kind of weird and funny to say. Eh. I, I'm I'm not so thrilled with them. I don't, I don't know if a, you like them, but it's a I have cool models I want to use them kind of thing. I feel you know. Yes, if you have some really good looking Cayman models and Raptors and stuff like that, yeah, bring it, bring it because it's cool. I I do think um. I I think this is one of those sorts of things where, give me one second. I think this feels like it's one of those sorts of things where you you are playing down when you bring this. You're playing for fun, which is great. But I would probably let my my opponent know that I'm bringing up a whole bunch of wild animals. So you know, please don't just shoot them with you know your one Scorpius round that eliminates <laughs> half this unit, and then I never get to use them. Please let me get into something with some wild animals. They're not going to hurt me. Play with my toys. They're not going to even really hurt you when they get in. Realistically, it's not going to be like carving up a squad of your guys. It w- it'll be fine. <laughs> Yeah, no, the best you're getting is two strength five attacks on a Cayman, but there's no, like, AP, no shred, no nothing like that. They have basic close combat weapons. That It's such a missed yeah. opportunity. For 15 points, you know, he, he's two attacks, he's not, so three on the charge, stuff like that. G- give him some AP, because it's a crocodile, he'll bite you. He's a, call it a cyber Cayman, and he's got... I don't know, some sort of weird enhanced jaw or something so he can bite through space marine armor. Give him like something so sex. at least like it's cool. Like breaching sex. Yes. Yeah, there you go. Give, yeah, give, give him a breaching. There you go. You know, you want to get... Uh, to me, then it would feel like, yeah, he's probably not going to do much, but I'll remember that story when he, you know, bit you know, bit your praetor and took the last wound off of him or something like that. Like, yeah. this... At this point, unfortunately, they're not going to do much, and it does feel like the Beastmasters themselves are a liability. Get rid of them. What if we gave them chain axes? I'd be happy with anything better. <laughs> yeah. Well. Oh yeah, yeah. If we if we took that one, so because of the provinces, you can get the unit better in general. Unfortunately, yeah, you, well, they came in and hold the chain axe in mouth. Yeah. So the handlers would get better. The handlers would, could be weapon skill four. The handlers could be toughness four, or they could be um, give them chain axes or something. But, the handlers are ablative yeah. wounds for my animals. Yeah, they kind of are. They don't really do much themselves. Because th- then they'll go towards the closest. I'm okay with that. And they'll charge it. Uh, I'm okay with that for this unit. So, all right. Um, so Dan will not be joining us any further. Oh, um, yeah, I, I read the message. I'm not going to say what it was, but uh, you know, he's sorry. He he just had to go and take care of something. So, um, I assume we should keep going. Yeah. All right. Uh, we might not get with just two of us. We'll see if we still get through everything, but we'll see exactly oh, we, how far we get. The intro will change as needed. Yes, we got this. It's more of if we get if we get to a point where we're kind of tired of saying whatever it may be kind of thing. But all right, um, since I talked a lot about Beastmasters, do you want to take Sentinel? Absolutely. As a matter of fact, I was next in line, I think, for them. I think so. Yes, because technically the other part was Stan here to leave. Yes. Yeah. Yep. All that right. Works. So Militia Sentinel Squadrons. For 60 points, you get a Sentinel. You get Movement 7, Weapon Skill 3, Ballistic Skill 3. Strength 5 and Toughness 6 with 3 wounds, Initiative 3, 1 attack, leadership 7, and a 3 up save. So it's kind of like a Cyber Ogre. Actually, it's, this is like a box dread almost. Just yes. unskilled and with a poor save, no invulnerable save. Anyway, you get one of these guys. He's got a multi-laser. Um, it's actually an infantry model, technically, um, with the Militia, Skirmish, and Mechanized subtypes. Um, for those who don't remember Mechanize, essentially it's, I pretend I'm a Dreadnought without being a Dreadnought. Yep. So no, you, it, you're re-rolling Poison Flesh Bane. Um, you get to re-roll with your Armor Bane. Um, you get to use all your weapons. You get to use Heavy and Ordnance weapons. You could charge afterwards. Haywire Detonation Battlesmith it affects you as if you're a Dreadnought. And you can't join a unit um, unless you're it's Mechanized and vice versa. So... Mm-hmm. They're infantry now, which is an interesting choice, but I guess it works. You could add up to four additional sentinels for 60 points each for a flat rate. 
So five max of the unit. Any Sentinel may replace its multi-laser with one of the following. You could give it a heavy flamer for free, an auto cannon for free, a missile launcher with frag and crack missiles, not flak, for five points each, a las cannon for 15, or a multi melter for 15. Of these, if you're going to take something, it's either going to be an auto cannon or a multi melter. I feel. Agreed. Maybe a missile launcher because it's cheap and versatile, but it's the auto cannon and the multi melter that speak to me the most. Multi lasers are okay. They're not the greatest thing. I would rather have the auto cannon for the potential to rend and the extra range. And the multi melta actually does work. Yeah, you have multi laser type weapons already, or multi lasers themselves. You want something different, and this guy can bring some of that difference. Yep. Not to mention multi melts are twin linked, so that BS three doesn't penalize you nearly as much as it could be. Yeah, Being the, able to move and shoot it, you're yeah, it's a decent choice. When you look at the last cannon, feels like it feels fun, but you're 50 50 not going to hit the multi melt. Like, range is an issue, you have to get close, but you have tons and tons of targets. Okay, get there. But if you get close, the multi melt is probably going to start feeling better anyway. And luckily, these things do have the, the militia type. Maybe that's why they made it infantry with the militia type. So they do get quite a few of these provinces actually work for them. Yeah. Although, you, if you lose half the units, it's going to start running because they are not fearless. That is true. Yeah. The, these guys are dreads pretty much except for the fearless. By rules, that's the one spot that you're missing. Um, that makes it rough. So, so you probably just want to take, you can take what up to five. So, five yeah. wouldn't be a bad number. Keep it, keep it in. Um, wait, is the militia rule half or is it oh, uh, more than half? Oh, wait, 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 wait. The militia rule doesn't apply if you're recognized, does it? I feel Ooh, like they have an look. exception for it. I, uh, I, think I, I think we literally just said that to like two minutes ago. Militia. No, uh, a unit that includes any models with a militia subtype. Blah, blah, blah. You know, the militia that's falling back is charged. Advances. Um, I don't oh, see no, any they, of that. They, they ignore that third portion about um being charged while locked. Okay. Yes. Yeah, but not mechanized. Yes. Yeah. So, it, that, so that, they still it, suffer the first two parts. So if they're below half, they can't regroup. And if you're already falling back in your charge, you're just dead. And the big thing is for the militia rule, it's if the unit includes uh, at least half the models that it began the battle with and so on. So being at half is a problem. So take these guys in an auto mount. Yep. That way, you you all oh, they always need that one extra. Take three or take take one, three or five, because if you take four, if you lose two, you could just run away. At least this way, make yeah. them take a little bit extra. You could heal them, yay. Um, yeah. I, I do think it's funny that you could fit four of them inside a cargo eight hauler because they're infantry. Uh, ooh. Me I checked. Mechanized does not prohibit you from go getting inside a vehicle. Yeah, so you're you right. could it's put them inside a cargo injury. weight. I don't think it's worth it, but you can do it. It's it, uh, it honestly would be pretty funny. If you don't think these guys are fast enough, or if you're worried about them surviving, you get a turn, maybe two, but a turn <laughs> of having the cargo weight hauler for pretty cheap throw you up the board, and now I'm in multi-melter range. Actually, no. That's That might actually be a play. Because yes. the cargo eight could go at half speed to get you what is it? It's base move ten. Yeah, base move ten. Yeah, base move ten. So that moves up five inches. You mm -hmm. disembark your movement value, which is seven. So that's a twelve inch move up the board. Yeah, actually, yeah. that's a thing. Yeah, it it, it gives it actually. Um, it almost gives you happy melt in turn one. If they get closer, you get it. Or you could scout, but scout's a flat six entry deployment. You're, f it's technically faster to scout. Yes. Instead of disembarking, but I'd rather have the protection of the tank. Yes. Even if it and just slows it down by like one last cannon shot, that one last cannon shot can make a difference when you're a and, militia. And, and yeah, and your 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 cargo eight, you can take them in a three pack, so you could have two others with some other units in them. So now I'm pushing forward. It's what you don't want is, man, I got several anti-tank weapons. 
oh, you didn't happen to bring many tanks. We'll get to some tanks, obviously, in the, the heavies. But like, oh, I'm probably not going to get through them. Oh, I'll shoot your one vehicle. If you have a few, they can't pop all your vehicles necessarily. Um, and now the multi melter feels like a pretty good option because the multi melter does increase the points cost of this. But, oh, noticeably by twenty five percent. But yeah. seventy five points for a mobile multi melter isn't the. It's not the and, best thing, but it's not the worst thing. It's it's and, a thing. And on a pretty good chassis, on something that's toughness six with three wounds and a three up save, that's the best we've seen this army have. True, but there's you no know, invulnerable save, and there's no immunity to instant death. So you could absolutely no. ID this thing with the Dark Angel, for example. Or, oh my god, is this finally where Vindicators become useful? Toughness 6, that's half of strength 12, and a 3-up save, I think I... Oh my god, Vindicators have a use with the Demolisher yes. Cannon. And they they drop uh, this week. As of time of recording, Vindicators come out uh, like next week. Woo! And I actually talked to our rep, and he says they do have the lasers. I haven't actually looked myself, because... I don't randomly go to the GW website as often as I probably should. No, Instead, I it either. has the laser in the kit, which is good because the laser is the thing people want. Yeah, they really should no, use I'm, the laser I'm happy in all about the promo that part. picks. They really should use the laser in all the promo picks. <laughs> the other one, it's just, it's more iconic the other way. I think that's why they do it. When people think demolishers, that's what they think. They think of the cannon. Whether it's a good idea or not, that's what you think of. I like Sentinels. I think that's a really good... So we only have one more fast left. So far, I'm liking the options to an extent in, in fast here. And I think this is a really good option. And if you're a if you're a guard player, you have Sentinels. You have Sentinels lying around. They used to come in like every type of guard box you used to get had a Sentinel packed in there. So, and um, if your goal is to not have to buy an obscene amount of models they're they're good you probably have them and they're a decent amount of points so they can actually start they'll eat up points for you while feeling like they'll do something rather than some of these other options that are going to eat up points just so you can have points eaten up absolutely and um they are above the uh one point per dollar point level which is really cool and they did just drop a a new Oh, or is it a regular Sentinel they dropped, or was a? Oh no, because they do it's scout just, in the other types. It's just Sentinel. Yeah, yeah. But I know um, when the new guard stuff came out, there was a new Sentinel in there. Which, let's be honest, if there's new Sentinels, that means if you don't mind the old one, you can probably get a bunch of those for reasonably cheap. Because people, sometimes people absolutely do. Oh, here's a new model. I just want the new stuff, and they absolutely upgrade. They're wrong, but that's okay. Depends More on the model. For me, I don't like the new Sentinel. That's its own discussion. I'm okay with it either way. In general, for the for the guard stuff, I'm very hit and miss on it. Just just in general, some of it I like, but some of it is just I don't know. It's just a bunch of guys. Uh, all right, um, last fast attack choice we have here is the uh, Thunderbolt Fighter for 120 points. It is so. This is uh, a flyer. It's Move 22, plus a skill 3, of course. It's 12, 11, 10 with 3 hold points. It is 3rd line, so you're a flyer. Don't get glanced. It's going to get bad. Um, it has 4 center line front mounted auto cannon. Sounds I know why they do it. It just sounds weird. That's not plural. Um, it has 2 center line front mounted last cannon. Uh, it deep strikes. And if you want, you can throw grenade. Uh, sorry, throw um, some rockets on this. Be either heavy crack or he- heavy frag for fifteen points each. Um, I don't have their stats right in front of me, but I'm sure they're one use only, and I don't like that. Yeah, not for fifteen and points when one, your weapons go three. Sorry, it's one. Three. It's one fifty for um, solar ox, right? I believe I that's correct. Um, I don't actually. I don't have their thing in front of me, but probably should actually open that up. I know I, I can open it. Let me start opening that. And up you for don't get sake. the interception special. Room. Oh, there's, Remember how there's they have the intercept. thing where they can fly in and intercept. Which yes. Like, why is on a thunderbolt and not the lightning interceptor? There this we go. Okay, the thunderbolt role. was the one we liked. Got it. Yes. The, the, all these things have too many names, too many pieces. It, it gets unfortunately a little bit lost in the shuffle in my mind of what's what. Um, 
yeah, let me start. I'll, I'll start opening that so we have something to compare with. Um, overall, though, yeah, this is actually so the missiles were um, frag, of course, is normal frag missile. Uh, oh, no, so those are missile launchers. Here we go. Um, if it's the heavy frag rockets, 5.5 five is a large blast, pinning, one use. The other one's a, a essentially a crack. It's 8.3 Skyfire. So here's their way they get Skyfire. Sunder, but again, one use. The and one use Skyfire, part, then it's snap shooting against ground targets. Yes. Yeah, it has base Skyfire. So if 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 you if you're meta, because I don't want to say your opponent's bringing that, so you bring this. Although, if, if your opponent brings tons of flying stuff, they should hopefully let you know so you can bring a little bit of Skyfire. So that way, you know, yeah. can kind of make a game out of it. But unless you have concerns of Skyfire, don't take those missiles because you're also going to miss 50% of the time anyway. I, I don't mind the, fra uh, the frag missiles, but I'd probably rather just not add the add the extra points. Keep this I'll put cheaper. It this way. The LAS cannons will probably get the job done at killing other planes. Yes. You don't need crack rockets. And frag rockets, like, yeah, you can. Or you could not and just, you know, shoot more auto cannons and LAS cannons. Remember, there's a limit to how many guns you can shoot with the flyer. Yes. Adding these missiles does not increase your firepower. It just switches what you're shooting. Yeah. Um, they're the same price. Solar Ox one's 120 as well. Oh. It has that aeronautica air superiority that lets it do the extra bit that like you talked about. And the other thing is it has some... Um, it, its missile choices are a little different. Similar idea, because one's the Sky Strike missile, Hell Strike missile. Um, the other thing is it gets that Ramjet uh, diffraction grid it can take. But otherwise, they're actually the same in points. Oh, yeah, no, there's definitely a typo then in the militia book. It has to, uh, Solar Ox, the Imperialis book, it has to be. Because this feels like a more balanced document than other things. You oh, I agree. Published. 120 for this. This feels I, I about right. Mind. Yeah, it feels fine. Being third line doesn't feel excuse me, so rough on this. Because, as like I said, you are a flyer. Yeah, if you get immobilized, you're done. But you also, you do have weapons. You can potentially do quite a bit of good. If you don't need the last cannons, a lot of auto cannons, you will get a, you will get hits. If you want, you can fire two and two. Yep, or go all in on the auto cannons. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's it's not a it's not bad for 120 points. Even without that interceptor rule, it's not bad at all. I feel this. This is yeah. just good. And, and I mean, Solar Ox wasn't pricey per se, but they were more expensive, so it's a little harder to fit in certain points. These guys, one twenty, that that's that's cheap for this army. You know, I can easily see fast attack with one of those, a bunch of sentinels, and then if you want to put them in the cargo eight, cool. If not, you have options of say taking cavalry squad. You know, giving your opponent multiple things and multiple types of things to deal with. But no, the Thunderbolt, I, I do like. I do think this is a good choice. Um, I said it pulls double duty, which is nice as well. All right, that finishes the fast attack. And that, with my time stamping, puts us to the heavy support for Steve to start with this uh, rapier battery. All right, hopefully my congestion does not get too bad through this. So, the Imperialis Militia <laughs> Rapier apart. Battery. Yep. 30 points. Gets you uh, one carrier and three gunners. The gunners um, do not get bumped to a three-up save like they did in Solar Ox. They're going to be moving six. And then a lot of threes. One wound, three initiative, one attack, leadership seven, and a five-up save. Um, it's one carrier, three gunners, and that's the ratio. Each additional is 30 points. The guys come stock with last pistols or auto pistols and flak armor. The carrier gets the grab multi laser, infantry with artillery and heavy for the carrier, militia and heavy for the gunners, which means that your unit is going to start freaking out when it loses half of its dudes. So yep. be careful about that. 
On the upside, um, you're in a three to one ratio. So you could afford to lose half your dudes and still have all your guns firing. Although at that point, then you lose all your guns and they fall back. That's not good. Yeah. Um, but, you know, maybe skip the multi-laser. Switch for Gravity Heavy Gold for free. Eh, laser, laser destroys for 25. 55 for laser destroy is not the worst thing in the world. No, and they so can't take a quad launcher with frag shells for 20 points. Just frag feels kind of bad. Laser destroys, I think, are a decent pick. And even the stock gun is not the worst thing. Because at least you're rolling a lot of dice at a decent strength. I don't know. Yeah. What sucks, you're only getting one per slot here. Like, you know, one unit per slot instead of the th- a potential three per slot in Solar Ox. And they didn't yes. run away. That's the big thing. The biggest thing between the two is that here, you know, yeah, you get, well, so you get five additional rapier carriers here. In theirs, you can only get two additional. So you can you can have more rapier carriers, but theirs is a tercio. So you can also all work together with the other units from that piece and all. Like You get a little bit more options. Because um, like I said, it's, it's part of the auxiliary tercio there. So you can take multiple units. They're a little bit smaller, but they can also fire back together, which is big. And uh, the cost difference is like five points. That's actually oh, not that's much it? cheaper. Yeah, Ooh. from the from the base unit, it's I thirty-five like instead of thirty, much. and each additional is thirty-five. There, here, they're thirty. Yeah, I would just go with the solar rocks ones. I would just take the little alloys attachment, do solar rocks for the heavy support battery. If that's really one on one, yeah, know. I would do that. Yeah, because so, yeah, they also get a three up save. Yes, the five you got here, like bolters will shred this. Yeah, they're hitting toughness five because of the guns, but they'll still shred this. And the biggest problem is if your guys start going away, they have any militia guys in there. They they just they run. They're easier to run. You're not going to regroup. You don't have a chance. Not that you can regroup for the gun. You actually, oddly enough, they have a better. Uh, leadership. Do they really? The militia are leadership seven. The solar ox are leadership six. That's wild. Yeah, you're you're actually a little bit a little bit more. Um, everyone heavy and stuff like that. But yeah, so they're a little less likely to run. But if they start running, they will never come back. Um, yeah, I should probably go over the weapons super quick because we haven't mentioned these yet. Yes. In, uh, um, no, absolutely do so. So the stock weapon, the Gravis Multi Laser Battery, to be range thirty six, strength six, AP six, heavy six, twin linked. That's a lot of sixes in a row. Yeah. Um, the twin linked makes it decent, you know. Um, strength six is not bad. You're wounding um, contemptors on fives, which is not the worst thing. If you upgrade it to well, side grade, I guess, to the where's the bolt weapons? Okay, the Gravis Heavy Bolter. It's range forty eight, strength five. AP4, heavy 8, twin linked. So you're, lo- you're actually going up in shots and better AP, better range, but you're losing some strength. I'd rather have the heavy bolters, but the multi laser is not the worst thing. Um, then we could take the heavy LAS cannon. No, sorry, not heavy uh, Laser cannon. destroyer. The laser destroyer. Yep. Laser destroyer is range 36, strength 9, AP 1, ordinance 2, twin linked, exoshock 6 up. Basically, it's a variant last cannon. Mm-hmm. And then finally, we have quad launcher. artillery, the quad launcher, with frag shells only. They are range 12 to 60, strength 5, AP 5, heavy 1, barrage, large blast, 5 inch, and shred. They're not pinning. So I don't place too much stock in them. They're too expensive. It's a 5 the inch blast, launcher. which is cool, but it's. Yeah, not for that, not for that price. No, because it's twenty extra on the thirty was, you're spending for the piece. If it was ten, maybe not twenty. Yeah, like the laser destroyer, I'm fine with at twenty five. It does feel very, very expensive, but that's a strength nine AP one ordnance weapon that could just take out your yeah. tank if I roll. It's got it a off. four. It's got a forty inch threat range. That's really good. Mm-hmm. AP one is really good because that means on a five you're causing an explosion result. Yeah, that I'm okay with it being expensive. 
because there's a chance it does a lot for you. The quad launcher, I don't think it necessarily does for only five points less. I no, I, I would probably go the yeah, probably the Gravis Heavy Bolter. Yeah, I think that's where I'm sitting too. Like, if I ran this unit, if I was starting from scratch, like I just want to have some field artillery guns. I think they're cool, but I don't like the other field artillery guns. Go with the Gravis Heavy Bolters. Maybe they'll even scare Dan's custodies. Who knows? I mean, everything um, else here actually, is a vehicle. Valaks so. hate that option. They're scared. Yes, of they that. do. They get shredded by that. So, uh, if a cannon comes a problem for you, maybe go Gravis Heavy Bolters here. Action out of bad shout. Yeah. Other than the ordnance battery, everything else is going to be a tank, which is unsurprising for the heavy support. But with, with your limit to heavy support options, I, I kind of feel like I might want the tanks because we know they 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 have some other um, squad style weapons like this from some of their other choices already. Um, the like the field gun battery and and fire and uh, fire support squads and all. So you. You have some other options already. I don't know if I would take these guys. Not bad, but I think you do though. If you take, I think you got to take a lot. I don't. I don't think you get out of this. Uh, get out of this cheaply. I don't think it does you any good if you try to get out cheap. All right. Um. Why don't we go to the next one? Let me scroll and put in a timestamp because I got a job to do here, and. We'll talk about the Malkador, and Woo! again, we'll compare it a little bit to the Solar Ox one, because similar with some actual differences here. So this is Malkador Heavy Tank. It's 185. Um, that is a decrease of 40 points. The Solar Ox is 225. You have the same base stat line. Your move 14, plus the skill 3, your 13, 13, 12, with 5 hold points. Biggest thing here is, again, you are third line, so any glances are just pens. You are reinforced, though, so that's going to help. Um, this one is a support squad. What? I don't know how that comes into play. Okay, good, because I I got really confused. It can't be your compulsory heavy support? Because... The, the, the Malkador and the Solar Ox, it, it has a different special rule that does different stuff. But I could see there, because there's maybe like a, a doctrine that puts heavy in or something. There's nothing like that here. There's nothing that changes the force work. I don't, there's no required heavy support in anything that we've seen. Nothing here, nothing they've come out with. So unless they're future proofing or someone uh, forgot to remove that line. Yeah, no, there's nothing else on sports where it's just it can't be taken as compulsory. Yeah. Um, All right. Maybe they're future proofing for like some weird scenarios. I don't know. All right. So if you ever have to take a heavy support, you can't make it this guy. <laughs> um, so he's got some hull mounted stuff. There's a heavy bolter and a battle cannon towards the front. Left and right sides have heavy bolters. So essentially three heavy bolters and a battle cannon. Everything though is hull mounted. Um pointing either front or sides. You can change out your whole mounted battle cannon for a Gravis last cannon for 10 or the Vanquisher battle cannon for 10. Um, we discussed in the past liking the Vanquisher. We're still going to end up liking the Vanquisher. I'm sure. Although we talk about so, so many things that I have to review what some of these do. Uh, which um, ones? So the, the Vanquisher. Vanquisher. Was, the Vanquisher is the, the big Vanquisher thing. was range 72, strength 9, AP 2, Brutal 2, Sunder, I think. That's where I it comes from. Sure sure. Do they put. Uh, uh, it's an auto or, weapon. Oh, okay. Vanquisher Battle Cannon, range 72, strength 9, AP 2, yes. Heavy 2, Sunder. Oh, and Brutal 2. Brutal 2. It's a, a last cannon with Brutal and more range. That's what you I'm You go saying. for Thank that. You. Yes, that's much, much better than the Battle Cannon. This, because the problem with the battle cannon is that it's AP4. You know, it's heavy one. It's a three inch blast, not much. It pins. Pinning is great, but you're AP4. Strength eight, sure, but this is an army that needs to get through armor. Everything we've talked about up till now doesn't hurt armor. doesn't really do much to it. Unless you're taking, like I said, those sentinels with multi melters or a lot of these options. That's where it feels like you're lacking. You're not lacking at hitting space marines. You're lacking at punching heavy stuff. The Vanquisher does. 
Um, you can exchange your heavy mount, your front hull mounted heavy bolter for things like auto cannon, multi laser, heavy flame, or last cannons, demolisher cannon. If you want to spend a lot of points, um, I don't hate that option here because this is another army where you don't have a lot of punching through, and that at least is a decent AP for punching through. You don't for have the sorts AP of things that you have. three and AP two in abundance, so it it, no. it has a role with the AP three and you might get lucky and get through with the brutal three or with the rending. So it, it, you, it, it, it's playable. Yeah. It's playable. It, it, it's better here than in space Marines where they have plenty. And I think it's better here than in solar ox where you have some other options. Um, you can exchange essentially your side weapons for auto cannons, multi lasers, heavy flamers, last cannons, everything is free to switch except for the last cannons. You can take some pintal options and you can take things like smoke launchers, searchlights for five each. You can take um, a hunter killer. Don't it's 10 points and you're going to miss or a dozer blade for five. Uh, I'd probably just do the dozer blade just to, just to be safe. You don't want to mobilize this thing. Otherwise yeah. I'd probably, since it's a little cheaper, the downside being third line, but reinforced helps. I mean, you could almost put the Demolisher on without actually spending much additional than what they paid. That maybe... I would probably switch it to the Vanquisher before. Heavy Bolters aren't too bad if you're just firing them defensively. Or... Hmm. I mean, you shouldn't have to because you could have so many um, conscripts that the enemy will never reach you. Mm, that's true, yeah. Bubble Wrath for days. If, if I don't like the heavy bolters, maybe the multi, maybe switch everything out for multi lasers. Again, that way you can still fire them defensively. You can fire it um, essentially at closest target otherwise, since defensive you're allowed to do that. And strength six means you actually could get something done. If for some reason you don't want the heavy bolters, you could go that option. True. Um, yeah, this is one where I actually probably would get rid of that heavy bolter, put the demolisher cannon on. I'm more. I'm not too, too bad in terms of points. And I, I, with that, with the Vanquisher, you are now dedicated anti-tank. And that's a big, big thing that's missing in this army. Other than in a moment, we talk about Lehman Russes. Otherwise, it's it's kind of feeling like you don't have anything for that. So I, I, I do I do like that. And the, the Malkador is an amazing looking tank. It this is. is a very, very good looking piece. I still don't rate the Demolisher Cannon. I might go, maybe I'd go Last Cannon, but yeah. I'm just, when your Ballista Skills 3, I'm worried about a Last Cannon because I'm going to miss half the time. But it's 40 less points than a Demolisher Cannon, which is Um, 20 more infantry that won't accomplish anything. (laughs) You might be able to squeeze it in. If you're, uh, if you're not wanting the Demolisher for some reason, yes, I would swap to the Last Cannon immediately. Um, so if you're swapping that, are you going main gun Vanquisher battle cannon or are you Ab- going Gravis nope. last cannon? No, absolutely Vanquisher because Vanquisher is a Gravis last cannon, but with Brutal too. Yeah. And then you just go Dreadnought hunting. Yes. Maybe Terminator hunting if you have to. Because at least the last cannon will be more reliable than a Demolisher cannon against Terminators. Like, sure, if you get a good hit and you roll that at six, you're probably going to kill the Terminator, but... I lost a single Terminator to three Demolisher Cannons the other day playing against a Solar Ox army. Um, they, they struggle. Yeah. Um, actually, you know what? Thinking about that, if we skip the Demolisher, for less than the cost of that, you could go Vanquisher Battle Cannon, Last Cannon on your front, and Last Cannon... It, they're not Sponsons, but the Last Cannon's the left sponsons, and right sides. Yeah. Um, I probably go that route. Yeah, because now you are ab- you are absolutely going to get some through unless you're just super unlucky. You can absolutely hunt tanks or um, anyone in Terminator armor who you can't hurt yet. This army doesn't hurt them otherwise, really. So far, yeah. Actually, so yeah, maybe that's I'd what pro- I would do. I'd probably go that route. Yeah, you don't you don't need mass fire support because you just have bodies. Uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of the general bodies might be strength three weapons 
But if I have masses of fire, I'll get through your toughness for space Marines. I'll get through your toughness five robots with their saves because I'm just going to fire enough shots. I need something that's going to hurt the big targets or the very, very well armored targets. I mean, we've all played games where someone says, oh, I'm going to take uh, these saves on my my sergeant with a two up save. And then they make like 13 in a row. We've all played games where you make that obscene amount. I, I don't want to have to hope for ones when I'm already, you know, looking at fours to hit and like fives to wound things. Now, I think that I think that's a good way to take it. Take it for what you need heavy support to do, which is take out their heavy options. All right. Um, why don't you talk to us about the Lehman Russ that is all Lehman Russes? Oh, yeah. The Lehman Russ for the militia. 120 points gets you a movement 10, BS 3, front 14, side 13, rear 10 tank with four hull points. No transport capacity because it's a tank, not a transport. Um, comes with a turret mounted battle cannon and a hull mounted heavy bolter. It is a third line vehicle with no special rules, no outflanking, no reinforced, none of that. Just honest to God, Lehman Russ. You have options, and some of them are very easy to take options. You can take a Gravis Last Cannon for free, Auto Cannon for free, Vanquisher Battle Cannon with a Coax Mounted Auto Cannon for 5 points. That's straight up money. Demolisher Cannon for 20 points. Okay. Or the Executioner Plasma Cannon for 25 points, which is not a bad gun. It's going to be... It's a 5-inch blast, if I remember correctly. Let's uh, see. I'm pretty sure it is. Plasma Executioner. Yep, 5-inch blast. Range 48. Strength 7, AP 4 with rending on a 4. That sounds... Rending and not breaching. Yeah, rending that's not breaching. That one is the Executioner's Ooh. better. Okay, yeah, that's... Uh, Vanquisher's good. Executioner's good. Even the last cannon option's good. Switch out your battle cannon, though. It ain't, yeah, don't take the it battle cannon. do any favors. I'm sorry. Um... You can switch your hull mounted flamer for heavy flame. Hull, sorry, hull mounted bolter for a heavy flamer or multiplicer for free. The last cannon for twenty. I probably just keep the heavy bolter. It gives you a defensive gun, and it has four shots, so you'll get a couple hits if you need to. The last cannon is mm-hmm. not going to do you too any favors. No. You could take a pistol mounted uh, heavy flamer, multilaser, heavy stubber. Eh, you can. I probably wouldn't. And you can no, take keep standard standard things. Your Hunter Killer Missile, your search lights, your smoke launchers, and your dozer blade. I would skip out on all those little extra accessories. Maybe a dozer blade if you're going to run something up close, but I don't think you have need to get up close. So Vanquisher Cannon, Executioners, keep it simple. Third line makes them a little fragile. Um, that's something to be careful of. But you can squadron them if you take that one Providence all the way at the end. I'm going to check if there's any restrictions yes. on that. I think you can do anything you want, though. Hey, I don't think there's any restrictions otherwise. Um, up to two extra heavy support choices. Must be filled with Lehman Russes. And you gain the option to add up to five additional Lehman Russes to 420 points each. So that could be a really nice ally detachment. You get a really cheap troop unit, the HQ, and then just three units of up to six Russes. Yeah, the biggest thing for that is if you want to take it, is the provinces you can't take with it, which is Unending Horde, Debased Rabble, Tainted Flesh, or Ogan Conscripts. Yep. Um, if you want to lean into tanks, though, if you want to lean into Lehman Russes, this is the only way it's going to work. Yeah, because one per slot is not an efficient use of a slot, especially in Heresy, where the game size gets big. But they do definitely add something to the overall army list. A special, especially the execution plasma game. Like the Vanquisher is good, but we can get a Vanquisher elsewhere. Well, on the Malkador. There's not that many places, but the Malkador could take it. The Executioner, this is your only real plasma. So, like you can take a plasma gun in 20 guys elsewhere. This is a plasma big blast. And that particular variant would be about 55 points cheaper doing it this way because the only way to get out of Solar Ox is the Assault Squadron, which is at 200 points per. That's the one that can take the the Plasma or the uh, Volkite Macrosaker. So 
here we're getting you, you it do for get a good 145. Savings. That's yeah. a 55 point discount for an effectively almost identical tank. Yeah. You're missing the reinforced, which does suck. The the third line without being reinforced does hurt, but you are cheaper and at 14 You're front, saving enough it's kind of worth it. Yes. And at 14 front, I'm not as concerned about the glances turning the pen because they're hit, you know, they're usually hitting you with dedicated anti-tank at this level, which usually wrecks your stuff anyway. Oh, you know, yeah. if I fire a squad of last cannons at you or a bunch of multi melters, I was probably going to take you out anyway, um, potentially. You know, um, I, I'm more concerned about third line when small arms glance me and shut me down. You know, you're probably going out if someone's hitting you with something big enough anyway. But yeah, I like the the plasma cannon, I think, is is an amazing option. Oh, yeah. Vanquisher, you can get somewhere else. The plasma cannon, like you said, that's a weapon you don't have otherwise. There's no other spots with that. And it's an amazing weapon to go hunting Terminators with, which is, again, another spot that you so far are really, really bad at. You know, it's it's strength seven, so you're not necessarily doubling them out, but you're getting the wounds in. You don't Looking have an option it, otherwise. For effectively, what is it? Um, it's one twenty five versus one ninety five. So that's seventy points more for mm-hmm. a Malkador over a Rust with the Vanquisher Cannon. I think that's a f- fair re- upgrade. Seventy yes. points more gets you significantly more durability between reinforced and those two extra hull points. Yeah. So, um, yeah, Russ is for Plasma. And Malkador yeah. is for Vanquishers. Yeah, it's it's just the same. They did such... I understand why they don't want the Battle Although, Kin to be amazing. a but... six-unit Vanquisher Russ squadron is... Whew, that'll kill a Dreadnought. Yeah, you're eating whatever's lunch money that you want to. Um, even in that, hey, Terminators. You're going to take out a whole lot of Terminators with that as well. Oh, yeah, because remember, the um, auto cannons are... Coax auto. Oh, that's gonna be annoying to roll. But coax auto cannons give you twin linked if they hit. So yeah. that's that's not bad. It's not bad it, won't, it won't be that bad to roll because you got to just roll two at a time until you see how many don't get any hits and then they're separate. So it's it's not awful. True. It's a bit annoying, but it's it's it, it's not too too bad at least. But um, either of those options are good. I think if you're running like one. If you're not taking the way to take multiple, I like the executioner more. But if I'm going to run a squadron, pro- the vanquisher actually might be really good. A squadron of those guys. It's just a shame the only way to get it is the Providence to get the squadron. Because because unlike elites, they actually have heavy support choices here. So you might want several of your heavy supports. But, all right. Um... Everyone likes the Lehman Russ. We know that. So we are on to the heavy ordnance battery. So different guys with different guns. Um, 75 points for this. You're getting one gun. You're getting four gunners, which the other one got you, what, three? So you're getting one extra guy. Yeah, you get an extra gunner. These come with one extra buy. Um, the this gunners is set are... set up different. What do, you, what do you mean it's set up different? Um... Than the other heavy ordnance batteries you've seen, like for the solar yes. ox, this one's very different. Yeah. Um. So the militia are the stat line you think they should be. They are the leadership seven. They are on the five up save. For the gun carriage, is of course, um, weapon skill plus skill three. It's strength seven, toughness seven. It has four wounds this time. Well, one initiative who cares, and three up save. So it is a bit tougher. Um. They're obviously artillery or militia. They're heavy. Um, it has an Earthshaker cannon. That's the gun carriage, of course. And then the guys have last pistols or auto pistols with their normal flak, uh, flak armor. And they have the special rule of man the guns. This follow. Uh, we'll go through the options real fast. Um, they may include up to two additional gun carriages, 65 each, so you can have up to three carriages. Unlike the other options, though, normally when you buy the carriage or the battery, or whatever they want to call it, you get a set amount of guys. For this one, the gun carriage and the militia gunners are separate. You can get 16 additional militia gunners for two points a model. So that does mean if you wanted one gun with 20 guys hanging out, you absolutely can do that. 
Um, and you can swap out your Earthshaker for a Medusa. So uh, there we go. Um, for the Earthshaker, we went through this one before, but just mentioning it briefly. It's 240 inch range. Hit anything like Strength 9, AP Forts, Ordnance 1, Barrage. It's a large blast with Shred and Pinning. We've said it before. The Earthshaker is not a bad weapon. It is a, It is ostensibly a good weapon unless it gets pricey. This keeps it pretty cheap. The Medusa, if you swap to it, same strength, same AP. It's also Ordnance one. It's Barrage. It's a large bass. The difference is it's pinning like the other one, but instead of Shred, it's Rending 6. I like the red dig. I yeah. fought against two Medusas the other day. They put in decent work because of the rending and the fact they're shooting out two large blasts because it was a squadron or two. Yes. Um, Medusas are definitely worth it. And honestly, the Basilisk is cheap enough. Sorry, the Earthshake is cheap enough that it's kind of worth it here too. I like the Medusa better. I don't know if I like it for 25 points more, but I do like its deal better. I, I like it, my the way I look at it is, I like it at 100 points, which would be the cost of one of them with the Medusa, the Mortar. Because at 100 points, a large blast that's both pinning and rending, at strength 9 means I can, again, I have ways to hurt the heavy infantry that people can have, because this army doesn't have a lot of good options for that. This is a good way to get some of those rounds into people. Um, for their special rule of man the guns, um, they may only attack with a maximum number of gun carriage equal to the militia people they have. So you have to have gunners for everyone. Um, if they have too few, then you can only shoot the ones that there's enough of. Um, if it includes less than two militia gunners for each gun carriage, then any attacks made by all gun carriages are ballista skill of one. And any result to hit on the scattered eye must be rerolled. That's if rough. you're forced to fall back, they obviously, all the models are just gone. That that's pretty standard, but that's a really you big difference. You pair this. Isn't there a providence that says if you're forced to fall back, you get pinned instead? You pair it with that one. Yes, uh, Alcom Jackers. You pair with Alcom Jackers. Jackers. Yeah, if you're taking these guys, th this to me is a viable strategy. If you want to lean into these guys with Alcom Jackers, that way you're not running away, you're sticking around because you can take a lot of militia with this. You got a lot of ablative wounds. But you just have to be careful because if you start taking too many, you start going down to your ballista skill starts tanking horribly. Yeah, and if you go below oh. half, you still flee without yes. the jackers. It's just you're not taking it at the 25% mark, essentially. Yeah. Although your gun carriage is at four wounds. Not saying that you want to take it on it, but if it's getting to that point where you might lose it pretty soon, you could take a couple of the wounds on that because it is a better save. True. If, if it's like right down to the line, you absolutely need to save the weapon. Um, you can take up to th two more. You take three of these. I would just take the three. If you yes. can, like if you have the models, take the three. Go all in. I Because you I could kinda, shoot all the guns because you're infantry yeah. in reactions. I kind of don't like it less than the three. I mean, it's if you got one, you got one. But for this, for for... For where I see it really supporting the army, a squad of three of these would say the Medusa Mortis has 300 points plus guys. Like, fill this up with with the extra guys. Oh, um, yeah. So you're looking at, what, like, 332, three large blasts that are pinning and rending and strength nine with a lot of ablative wounds. You'll score is, enough hits. Yeah, you're going to get plenty of hits. You're going to get those sixes on rending. And even if not... Strength and I means I'm probably wounding you on two, so I'm at least also getting a lot of things in there. And if you have multi wounds, strength nine is doubling out a lot of things. Not everything, but a whole lot of things. So even if I don't get as much rends as I want, I'm still actually hurting you if you start failing any saves at all. You know, I um I played against some iron hands the other day, and the absolute worst feeling is when you have a strength eight weapon that normally doubles people out and then only does one wound to their squad of whoever. Or um, I was going against like Gorgon stuff like that. So they also have feel no pain. Like that is, that's a rough feeling. So like here, I'm going to double people out. Even if you get your two up save, if you fail it, I take you out. That's something. Um, I like this a lot more than the other one, I think, than the rapier batteries. They're cheaper though, but. But this feels more meaningful. Yes. 
it feels like what the army needs. You don't have a lot of ways to deal with stuff that is 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 heavy and well armored. So what I'm hearing is go straight up World War One tactics with it. Absolutely. The other nice part is you have so many bodies. Again, I can keep you from charging these weapons. I'll put these the the gun's thirty six, so it's not quite as as great of a range. But even with that one, thirty six is a pretty good range. I'll put them in a nice spot on the board, and I'll have a bunch of infantry in front. You'll never get through them all. There's going to be too many guys. All right, loving that option. Oh yeah. Uh, Final heavy support. Yeah. This one is a super heavy. Ooh. So it is possibly one of my favorite models ever because it's just so cool. The Imperialist Militia Gorgon Heavy Transporter. So for 250 points, you get movement 8, BS3, armor 15 front, 14 <laughs> side, 10 in the rear. That 15 front is a beautiful thing. I think you need to be like a Reaver or a Warlord to get 15 front anywhere else without a flare shield. This is just because there's that giant slab of metal in the front. Love it. Eight hull points, transport capacity 40. Because it's a super heavy, it could carry multiple units inside as long as it doesn't exceed capacity. Um, you get two pins mounted heavy stubbers and two Gorgon mortar batteries. Uh, you're a third line vehicle, you're super heavy, you're a transport, you got no special rules, and one access point at the front. It really should be an assault ramp because it's so huge. It should uh, be. That, that, that's a long-term like denial of satisfaction. So I'm not surprised they didn't change it here. Uh, for those Gorgon Mortars, they're range 24, strength 5, AP 5, heavy 1, 5-inch blast, barrage, pinning, and 1 use. Uh, the 1 use kind of kills it for me. Like, they're okay, and then they're 1 use, so it's like, meh. Good news is we can switch those out. Um, for options, we take up to 200 killers at 5 points apiece. Um, that's twice as good as 100 killer for 10, for 10 points each. <laughs> I'm not saying you should do it, but like it's twice as good of an option. Um, you can replace the pentamounted mounted heavy stubbers with multi-lasers for free. Straight upgrade, so you do that. Um, uh, auto cannon for 10 points. Um, sure. Or a last cannon for 20 points. Now, this is pintle mounted, which means it's defensive. But yes. it's a super heavy, so it's not reacting unless it's shooting at that list of special classes that super heavies react to. So, I mean, yes, it's a pintle mounted blast cannon, but at the same time, it's also on a super heavy. It's it's still two useful, of them, actually. It's two pintle mounted blast cannons. Um, yes, two of them. Yeah, one for yeah. each of the stubber slots. Yep, they're mm -hmm. the little guns on the back of the tank. Next to the, I guess, cabin. Kind of look like ship defense guns in their positioning. Yeah, it's, it's then, a World War II lander. It's a D-Day lander. Yep, so it's, yep, that, it's the back part where the driver was. Yeah. And then for our, our other set of options, we could replace the Gorgon mortar batteries with either spawns and auto cannons for 20 points, heavy flamers for free, heavy boulders for 15, multi lasers for 15. 15 oh, sorry. Two pairs of said weapons so two pairs of auto cannons two pairs of heavy flamers two pairs of heavy bolters two pairs of multi lasers or two pairs of sponson mounted last cannons um throwing on last cannons for 45 points is not the worst thing because two pairs of sponson mounted last cannons means that you could divide those shots among four targets Plus the two up top. That's six last cannon shots that don't have to go to the same place because you're a super heavy and you don't care. Yes. Being third line and super heavy means you really don't care because the only thing that matters is explosive results. And being front armor 15, you probably don't care. A last cannon needs a six to glance you normally. So it needs a six to pen you. Okay, sure. It ha it's going to happen and it's going to suck. But wait, you're a super heavy. So let's roll a six for it to matter at that's two mm. sixes in a row. Sure, one of them's re-rolled, but it's it's a beefy tank. Yeah. I love this and your, thing. And your sides at 14 mean even if they get to the side, because this thing is, is reasonably a long rectangle. Even if they get to the side, 14 is still very good. You know, it's not it's not like some of these other tanks where that that drop is either more drastic or feels worse. 
getting to what is normally some of the best armor in the game on your sides is really, really good. Absolutely. Um, so, so this thing is great. You throw, what do you put in here though? You can transport 40 things. Anything. You could put, hear me out. Okay. 40 divided by five. That's eight sentinels. Don't do that. But you can. But don't do that. Um, if it was faster, the biggest problem is this thing is Gamu's eight. It's slow. Yeah. It's slower than the sentinels. Almost. I mean, to get out, it's slower. Staying inside, it's. Yeah. Yeah. I guess slow. that's the question for this army. What what do I put in there? Ogrens. Grenadier squads. You could fit ogrens in there. You could do forty man mm-hmm. blobs of conscripts. Like you could put almost anything you want in it. You put multiple things in it. You could no. do a group of five ogrens. So you could take the boss with the thunder hammer, and mm-hmm. that'll take up twenty of the slots. And then for the second tw- set of twenty slots, I have to do two mid grenadier squads or one infantry squad. And then the infantry squad is going to score an objective. So Ogrens get out, soak some fire, charge something, beat it up. Infantry squad follows up after it, takes the objective. Yeah. yeah this is something where, I mean, if you're taking this model for 250 points, at minimum, if you're putting some guns on it, you're going more. It's figuring out what you put in it. But yeah, actually having your troop unit, here's a way to make sure they get there safe. You can put some last cannons on this to help clear the way. Um, that's not a bad option. The Ogrens, like you said, being in there, I think is is good as well. Um, if you are only happen to take a Sentinel or two or something like that, if you were taking like a Min because you just had one, yeah, maybe throw that boy in there with it. You know, way to turn, get him out. Now he's safe. You know, yeah, because that front fifteen is way more durable. Those eight hole points are way more durable than the cargo yeah. eight. Honestly, even if you don't have a plan for this thing, I just think it's such a cool model. And sure, it's yes. expensive to kit out all last cannons, but you can. So for oh god, three hundred and fifteen points, you could just shoot every round all the last cannons. Which you know is what, honestly on par with no. Space Marine vehicles. That's it not abs- the worst thing. Six last cannon shots is not the worst. That's Spartan level. That's even more than Spartans. Spartans can get to five. That's true. And they're all um, going on one thing. Here you can split it up if you want to. Yeah. Like, it's it, not bad. <laughs> this yeah. thing is not bad at all. Th- 315, 315 can sound like a lot, but this is an army that's pretty cheap. And also... If I happen to take out your Spartan with it, if I take out, I don't know, let's say you got a unit of Predators. If I take out a Predator or maybe a Predator and a half, I'm going to feel like I've earned my points. Even if I don't earn like point for a point, I haven't I haven't killed 315 points worth of stuff. If I can take out stuff that I'm concerned about, it will feel worth it. At one of these firing those shots, I'll take down your Scorpius. I take down one of your Scorpius. My army is so, so much better now because you're going to pin me easily and you're going to hurt me easily kill one of those i will feel like i have i've done something good and i have a bunch of guys to let out later and oh, it, yeah. it's durable enough that you can really wait multiple turns you can wait till turn four to get the people out because they've hopefully survived till then yep and it, if this thing dies and it's close to the enemy it's gonna take some of them with it too because it's gonna be strength seven plus d3 with six plus d6 inches the radius because it's a super heavy yeah so like you could just use it like a giant, you know, Trojan horse almost. Like, yeah, go ahead, poke uh, it, see what happens. Yeah, I'd probably load this thing down with last cannons, point it at where I want it to go, and just let's see if you can deal with this. Um, it, it gets better, of course, if you have some other heavy options that they want to go after, because otherwise everything does dedicate. Like, if you have like a Lehman Russ or, or some of those. Or, or, or something else that can really lay down some withering fire, but this thing is great. It used oh. to be a dedicated transport last edition. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. That that and would it make was it still a super better. heavy. It was still a super heavy too. Like it was wild. And it still oh. is a great pick. I'm so happy it's a thing. I was a little nervous when I didn't see it show up in the Solar Ox Legends, but it's mm. here and I'm happy. Yeah. I said it it, it is Honestly, great looking as well. It's a hundred percent a D Day lander. Um, it's a D Day lander with like the, the uh, maybe a little bits of it are different, but that's absolutely what it's based on. 
Um, although on their website, they have it wrong. It says it's, it transports 50 people. Oh, because it used to last edition. Oh, yeah. They, oh, I'm sure. Yeah, they just have, they're not and worried about it. It might transport that. 50 and 40K. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, I don't know. I've never actually looked for the thing there. I mean, you could even just throw four Grenadier squads in here with two special weapons, hop out, and just throw out a ton of plasma shots because you'll have eight plasma guns all in one place. Something like that's like, actually a pretty good idea because when we were looking at the Grenadiers, the problem we said related to the special weapons is you know they need to survive long enough to use it they're going to survive long enough to use it so, uh, uh, but i mean unless your opponent is stacked in such a way that they crush this thing quickly and if they do you aren't going to have a good day anyway <laughs> like yeah. it's going to go well that means you deployed against iron warriors rookie mistake yeah uh well actually hopefully by the time you listen to this that battle program is i'm thinking i'm going to release it um, it's Monday now, probably Tuesday, and this comes out Wednesday. So you'll get to see how the Death Guard did against the Iron Warriors. Um, it took quite a bit of editing because we had to take some breaks because, I don't know. That no room more, got I'm not doing way it, too hot. It, it, partly that. And the other thing is where we have the dice tray right now, you literally have to lean at a 90 degree angle to reach the dice tray. When we do it in the future, we're going to have to rearrange a little bit and, and make sure the dice tray is off to the side somewhere so people can reach it. Because it, it, it is rough. Yeah. But that's all right. We're, we're always upgrading, trying to improve. All right. We got one last thing. And it's probably... Hold on. Hold on. Pr- okay. You have to introduce this correctly. Okay. You have to channel you your inner Commander Boreal. It is the Bane Blade. There you go. Um, It's probably about where it's supposed to be. This is the so, properly balanced Bane Blade. Yes. Holy shit. Yeah. It's 400 points. The Solar Ox one is 750. Um, <laughs> other than that, I, I have them both open. I'll see if there's any other main differences. Um, okay. They actually is. There, there's one big difference here. So move 10, but skill three, it's 14, 13, 12. Um, the Solar Ox one is 13, 12, 12. So this one is a little bit tougher. But it's nine hole points where the solar ox is 12. So you do get more hole points, but your armor is better in general. Um, that's a pretty good trade off. Okay, okay. Yeah, I, I don't mind that trade off because like I said your third line, of course, but you're super heavy. So, you know, the pens mean that the extra pens means there's a chance for the explosions that cause you extra damage, but that's about it. Um, you are going to have some less weapons. You have a turret mounted Bane Blade cannon. Um, that, of course, is the same. You got the coaxial mounted auto cannon. That is the same. You have a demolisher cannon on your hull and a mounted twin heavy bolter. Um, so theirs has some spawns and weapons is the big thing, including some last cannons and some extra heavy bolters. You do not have those things. Base. Not stock. Yeah. No. Um, you can take, don't take the Hunter Killer. That's terrible. Uh, searchlights, depending on the, the length of your weapons, that's fine. It's five points. You can take some smoke launchers. No, you want to shoot. Um, you can take two sponsor mounted uh, heavy bolters for 20 points or heavy flamers for 10. So you can up it to 420 to get a little bit closer. Um, if it has been upgraded to have either of those spawns and weapons, you may further take um, two spawn. You may also take two spawns and mounted last cannons. So, in other words, at 450 instead of 750, you can be effectively the same weapons. Um, and then you can take some penal options: a twin length heavy bolter, uh, sorry, twin length bolter, a heavy bolt, heavy flamer, multi melt, a havoc launcher. I probably wouldn't bother. Maybe the multi melter for twenty. The other ones I wouldn't probably bother with. Yeah. I mean, you're looking at. But this is so much more playable. Yes. And because it's third line, it does not give up victory points, even though it's a super heavy slash Lord of War. So you're mm-hmm. not going to give up price of failure. I mean, you you can kit yourself to the same at four fifty, so three hundred points less. You have better armor by one, but less hull points. And like I said, for a super heavy, that's a pretty decent trade-off. 
Um, there'll be time of times, of course, where you wish you had the extra hole points, and there would be times when you wish they had the army, the armor. But you know, ah. I mean, the armor effectively offsets the third line. I think it's drawback awesome. because all third line does is it tips over the glances to pens. Well, guess what? These were the numbers you need to pen anyway. Yeah. So really, all you're yeah, doing yeah. is just taking away glances. That's okay. Yeah, that, that that's an absolutely great way to look at it. So, so you are effectively no worse, but for three hundred extra points again, I'm assuming you upgrade it so it's a co- more comparable. For three hundred points, they got three more whole points. I I wouldn't spend a hundred points per whole point. No, oh, sir. That's that 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 feels a bit much because this is also your only Lord of War choice. It's the other nice part is because it's so cheap, you can fit it in more easily and fit in smaller in games army. if you want. You could fit it in 2K. Yeah. The other one's only valid at 3,000 and more. You can actually take this in less. And in a 3,000 point game, I could take this at 450 and I could still fit in my Gorgon and I'm still cheaper. And I could put the squad, I could put probably a couple of the squads in, not all, but I could put a few of the normal squads in. And now I've just hit their Bane Blade. And I have oh, two yeah. super heavies on the board. And uh, not to mention, anyone can take this Bane Blade. Because Lord of War is its own detachment. Yes. As long as your allies chart allows you to do it, which technically they all do, just just a matter of allegiance levels, anyone can take this Bane Blade. And I fully expect to see people actually taking Bane Blades now, because this is done right. And mm-hmm. people want to use Bane Blades. Everyone has them. Everyone wants to use them. It just felt so bad before. But here, here it's worth it. Yeah. Actually, looking at it, um, because we said the Gorgon with all the last cannons, if you upgrade both of them fully, you're getting both those vehicles for about like 15 points more than the Solar Ox get their Bane Blade. That, yeah. That's that's more guns. That's two different choices. That's a lot of work that I can do for the cost of you getting one thing. Um, I know. So new forty k comes out like next month, but I know in current forty k bane blades and and certain things like that. It just they've they've had a rough time. So, but a lot of people have bane blades or have these sort of tanks and want to field them. Here's a great way if you have it to field it. Um, you're you're going to feel that you get good use out of it. But for the way it is, I it's it shouldn't feel oppressive. I don't think this thing is. Um, which is is good as well for that Bane Blade Cannon. I always forget what their stuff does. It's not the uh, best gun of all time. No, nah, but that's okay. Um, Range 72, oh. Strength 8, AP 4, Ordnance 1, 5-inch Blast, Pinning and Rending on a 6. Thank you. Yeah, I saw it on the the Solar Ox page. No, but I mean, at four hundred points, I don't mind it. At four fifty with those other options, I did mind it at seven fifty. Yeah, at seven fifty, it it you you really felt bad about it because you could take a Warhound for the same points. Yep. Right. And I don't well, think a Warhound's under costed either. No, no, I think a Warhound's cost is is it feels appropriate. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, moving into final thoughts. Um, we'll st- I mean, we'll we'll start towards final thoughts of, of what we talked about tonight. Wise, I, I liked most of the options. I felt pretty good about quite a few of these. Um, not all of them. The heavy ordnance battery. I think if, if I was building this army, I want those. Um, the gorgon, I, I just want it because it looks great. Um, the thunderbolt. Hey, it's a great fit. Um. Sentinels, hey, they're a great fit. Cav, getting that speed is a great fit. There's a lot of pieces here that are a great fit to the parts that we saw before and what they were truly lacking. Um, you want your fast and your heavies, maybe Lord of War as well, but your fast and heavies to round out the missing parts. And in this army, I think they rounded out really well. Oh, yeah. This definitely makes up for the lack of elites. <laughs> the elites were, was were, very the, disappointing. Ve- I would say disappointing is just there wasn't much there. Like, Ogrens were disappointing. Medics do what you expect them to do, so you can't really be disappointed in the medics. Um, mm. I feel like the field guns are pretty good over there. Yes. Um, 
But yeah, no, I think that this is this is all actually decently thought out. Maybe it's a little weird with the um, little menagerie unit, but they're meant to be weird. Yeah. Um, so, so at this point, we have went through all of the militia. What is your overall thoughts on militia? Uh, oh, man. So you're going to have to get used to the idea that your basic guy with the last gun is not going to accomplish anything of value. And it's probably going to die just by being put on the table. Um, they are fragile. Like if you thought solar ox, like, Oh, these guys are kind of fragile. They're only toughness three. Well, we got four up safe. Yeah. Nah, dude, you're just, this army is bolter bait with anything that's infantry, hmm. which is why you're going to put them inside Gorgon transporters. Um, but yeah, no, like it's, there's a reason that the average model is between two and eight points, depending on what it is. It's because you get two to eight points of value from it. Um, but I think they do give you that value. I really do think they do. The rough part then is the financial value of it, because holy, that that's that's a lot of building and a lot of painting. Yeah. Even if you go with a quote unquote elite army, it it's going to be a lot of building and painting. You can't even necessarily... And they're going to struggle to score objectives. Yes. Um, they only have two line units in the list. I mean, sure, not every mission is based around line, but like for at least for our local events, line is a pretty big factor in the scenarios that um, we get given under narrative events around us. Yeah. And only having the infantry squad and the grenadier squad as line, that's that's a limitation. They... um. I feel they do reasonably well at the current. Now we're waiting for um, the Chthonia book to drop, um, which hopefully we'll have in our, our our hands very very soon. But they do very well or reasonably well at the GW missions in the main book because the GW missions of the main book don't really care about line. There's a little bit of caring, but it doesn't care nearly as much. But if you're playing narrative, usually the line is legitimate. I I feel. One at least, we're much more positive on this than Solar Ox. Just like kind of across the board. I think that's fair because you're, you're paying a lot less points per model. So when a bolter just causes you to pick up half your squad, you don't feel as bad about it. Like, sure, it sucks that you pull the models off the table, but it's not nearly as bad when it's a 40 point unit for 20 models as when it's almost the same cost as that space for you. Because yeah. um, they were up there. They were like 8 to 10 points a model over yeah. in Solar Ox. I, I mean, they function a bit different. They, ha they have parts that were absolutely great. The, the Veltaris and, and sort of those squads. And they have their place. But they did feel that at times the points were just... You weren't going to get enough out of it. Like your unit's decent. But you're you're spending a bit too much to get to that. Where here... You're not spending much to get to it. There, it felt like you had issues of getting your toys. And what I feel, at least for these human armies, you need the toys. Because the basic guys aren't going to necessarily get the jobs done. Here, I can afford the toys. I can fill out my heavies and my fasts if I want. And I'm still going to have plenty of other units. You know, As a Space Marine player, you know... Maybe I fill my heavies, but then my fast may be an item. My elites may be not much. If I fill one of those special slots outside a troop, I'm not really filling everything else because I, I just can't fit it. Here, you're going to like fill your force org. Oh, yeah. Um, huh. Let's see. Personality-wise, mm -hmm. um, I feel like this is one of those NPC armies. Like Tyranids, right? Tyranids are an NPC army because mm -hmm. you're not the person forging an epic story. You're the person that's the antagonist to someone's epic story that's being forged. Right? When Marines fight Marines, like each side is a hero trying to tell their story. But yeah. when Marines are fighting these guys, it's you have to be ready to adopt that NPC mindset of I'm throwing forwards goons for the cool guy to kill. That said, you got so many goons, it will be a game still. But you have to you have to have the right mentality for it. Not everyone does. No. Just being perfectly, brutally honest, not everyone does. I love this. I love horde mode. I love just pushing my all forward and going, try to kill them all. 
And if they do, great, here's a second wave. Um, I did write a list. It's effectively 17, I mean, mathematically um, approaches 1,800 models, but really it's going to be like 1,200 to 1,700 based on dice rolls and how quickly your opponent kills you. Effectively 1,700 models in a 2,000-point <laughs> army because it's <laughs> because it's the 900 conscripts that come back on a 4-up. That's hilarious. Yeah. I, I would never want to play it, but I love the idea of it. I wouldn't mind playing against it, but I would never play it myself. I just can't. I want to get together like three to four people each to bring like, you know, like 150, 200 models. Just like, all right, we're going to try this. We're going to make it work. We're going to make it happen and just throw it on a board. <laughs> You're absolutely right, though, about that idea of this isn't for everyone. Not even like, let's assume you have a, a, an amazing, let's assume you have someone who can move your models for you. Not even that part. It's not for everyone because, like you said, some people don't like the idea of picking whole things up off the ground or, or whole units off the board. You know, if you don't ha if you don't have first turn, you are going to be multiple units down at the end of first turn. You're just going to be pulling up blobs of 20, 30 guys. But you have plenty more blobs. You have plenty more stuff. But yeah, you're going to watch attrition. So... um as someone who used to play orcs, yeah, I'd, I'd have times where, oh, is that turn? I pulled up, I picked up like 40 bodies. Like, oh, that was nothing. You know, if I do that in my space marine army, I've picked up almost, I've picked up most of my marines. That so feels it, it, bad. Yes, it is. It, it's a very different feel. You have to be, you can't be attached. You know, everything is expendable. Everything is an asset. You know, nothing, nothing to you can be special in this. Because nothing has a survivability that special requires, other than like the super heavies, of course. That said, you can absolutely build a list that gives up zero victory points for being destroyed. You be tabled mm -hmm. and you have zero points with this army, all the way up to the Lords of War, because you have the Warlord trait that says you want to die and you'll give up victory points for say the Warlord, right? I think mm -hmm. it's that one. You have the um, conscript squads, the uh, the levies. They don't give up victory points when they die. And they are mm -hmm. compulsory troops this time around. And then all your vehicles don't give up victory points because they're third line. Yeah. I mean, sure, you can't score objectives yourself, but you don't give up victory points. Here's what you do. You ally in some white scars that are in Sagar Mazan. They also don't give up victory points for dying, <laughs> but they do the scoring for you. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. Oh yeah, I've been thinking a little too much about it. It's hilarious. But you know, but stuff like this, these sort of armies give you that ability to find something weird and cool to do. Because like they are so off the wall and they are so different than the baseline. And you play Solar Ox because you want to do weird stuff. Because you want to say like to your opponent, hey, oh yeah, I have yeah, this is my list. This is the sorts of things it does. Like we're just gonna have fun with this game. Um, you you can win if you table me. Otherwise, you will get no points from anything or grab an objective. But I'm gonna have fifty guys on that. You're not getting anywhere near this thing. You know, you're doing it for for the pure fun of it, rather than necessarily. I don't want to say the word. I don't. I don't necessarily. Mean, I don't mean competitive in terms of like to beat someone but competitive as in like we feel like we're on equal footing walking in today versus each other you know you're when proposing I go to a challenge yes with this army yeah I, I i'm i'm giving you you know here's a puzzle box rather than we're standing you know to, to fight a, a battle versus each other i'm giving you a puzzle box if you can solve it you will win this game you know, it, it's not, you don't need certain dice. Well, I thought, if you can just solve this weird puzzle I'm giving you, you will win the game. But let's see if you can find that solution. Let's see if your army has that solution. Um, it, when, when, so I've played in several different um, events now. You know, call it what you want. But they, they're competitive games because we're both coming in with lists that are designed, you know, with some, some comp to it, but that are designed to be able to give a challenge to the other side that are meant to be able to survive and deal damage and all these sorts of things where sometimes these more weird choices, they have to get a little bit more zany with the way in which they attempt to do that. Uh, anything else on, on 
uh, on militia. I think that covers most of my thoughts. I, I almost said Solar Ox, and then I almost said Astra Meltarum. That's why there was a very long delay there, which yeah. it might not be a long delay after I trim the audio a bit. It might be faster. <laughs> I, I have mixed them up so many times. Everyone will understand. When you say the two-point models, you're like, ah, yes, that army. You're yeah. good. Yeah, I have so many different things open here. All right. So um, that will do it for us tonight. As always, we want to thank everyone who does listen. Remember, this is available in any podcatcher. It's also available on YouTube where we do put other content. By the time you hear this, I, I think I said it last week, but just it took more editing than I thought um, to be able to get the one. We're actually going to get the second game from the event out first because I, uh, Steve and I both played in the second game. So I knew, one, how I recorded everything. But I also knew where I needed to make cuts and things like that. The other game has Dan and some other friends of ours playing in it. But I have to take his stuff that he he captured. I have to review it and then get into the editing. So it's just a slower process. Um, so our it's Monday now for us. That will release on Tuesday. This episode should hopefully be out on Wednesday. Um, Dan's episode might be later in the week. I don't know. If not, it'll be early next week would be the goal. Um, have to see exactly what we have going on. As like I said, if anyone is local to um, our area, about middle slash north of in New Jersey, um, this particular weekend coming up on the Saturday, which, waiting for a calendar to open, there it is, um, which is the 27th at Maplewood Hobby, we're having the bazaar. Um, people come in and they sell things for cheap and buy stuff for even cheaper. Um, I have gotten, I've seen full armies go in the hundred range or less. And I've, I've, we have seen though some cases where um, one person had uh, the realm of battle tiles and those went for like 400 plus and some stuff. So you can get both cheap or if you have something worthwhile, yeah, stuff that's actually truly worth it does go for good amounts as well. So we have that. I'll put that in the, in the show notes on YouTube. Um, uh, oh yeah. Uh, for anyone who does want to help support us, we do have a Patreon. Um, we just ask, you know, anyone who has the means and wants to take a look, consider it. Like I said, it, it does help us. It helps cover our costs currently. We're at least getting, um, most of our costs are paid, um, or at least I put much less out of pocket now, but as, as that improves potentially in the future, then we can get equipment and, and things like that. Like the next thing is making sure the audio stuff works to be able to get better and cleaner audio for the battle reports that we want to do. So almost got my wife a laptop today, but she didn't like the color. So I can't record the battle reports myself yet because when she gets her laptop, I get hers because my work laptop can't run anything because it's all locked down. So hopefully soon I'll be able to record them myself without uh, uh, Dan stuff having to be around. Um, what what are we doing next? So we could finally cover Raven Guard. Ooh, that's a good thing. We should do the Raven Guard. Yeah, we could finally after all these months. All the, we're, we're approaching the one year mark. We could finish Raven Guard. Oh, the Raven Guard? Yes. Oh my and, God. I, and you know what? Honestly, once we're fully done it, we probably at, at some point, maybe once maybe once the inductee come out and stuff like that, to kind of do a discussion of like where where is it now? One, to correct some of our mistakes, but also like where are things now? Just brief overviews. Um all right, so we should hopefully be doing that soon. I don't know what else we want to do. Um at some point, we're supposed to talk some battle tech, but I don't know when that's going to be. That's on Dan. Dan has to arrange that. I'm not arranging that. Um, I do have some battle tech models now, but Dan's arranging that. All I know is they have mad cats and dire wolves. The rest of it, I I don't know. I I mean, I played in. The, I, here's what's weird. I'm probably going to say this when we talk battle tech, but I'll say it briefly now. I feel I should like the game more than I do. I don't dislike it, but something something hasn't hit for me yet. I don't know why. It you're is playing, mechs and I love. Hmm? Are you playing the full battle tech or alpha? Full. No, alpha. full battle tech. Maybe alpha. Maybe alpha. Might be. I think part of it is one. I don't like giant games of battle tech because they just take way too long. Um, it, it's mechs. I love mech stuff. It's math. That's what I do. So I'm not sure why I don't love the game as much as I think I should. But I do enjoy it. So I did pick up a starter set because it got eight mechs in it gives you rules it's got all that kind of stuff so i'm going to be working on those this week because in like two weeks my bushido stuff comes in and i got a whole bunch of tengu to paint for that so i'm trying to get the, the stuff done this week 
Um, so we'll definitely be doing that soon. We might just then take a take a little bit of a breather and just do a general episode and uh, discuss what we've been up to lately and hopefully start actually getting back to some Conquest stuff as well. Um, all right, so that's some ideas of what we're going to next. We don't exactly know. We are trying to get through this and then um, the world is our oyster until Chthonia drops. Um, which so far all we know, we know the Inducti. So we have them, but we'll see what else comes out. All right. Um, I think that belabors it all enough. So on behalf of everyone here at the show, has a good hobby, has a great gaming.